Having now determined our reactions, we can go on and determine the internal uh, shear and bending moment equations for the beam. To do that, we take an imaginary cut through each section of the beam uh, and then determine our internal shear and bending moment um, as a function of the position in the beam. So let's start by taking a cut through section AB. So when we do that, um, we take our cut, um, so here, and then we look at either one side or the other of this imaginary cut that we've taken through the section of the beam. So here we've taken a cut somewhere through the, the beam, partway between points A and B. Uh, and in this case, we're going to look at the left-hand side. So we've just drawn the left-hand side of the beam here, and then we can start adding in uh, the loads that are applied to that left-hand side of the beam. So we'll have our reaction force that we calculated previously. And we have our uh, uniformly distributed load that acts over this portion of the beam. And because we're trying to write an equation for the internal actions as a function of where we are in the beam, we need to um, write a, a variable that describes that location. So here we're just describing that as the distance from the left-hand end, the point A, to the position where we've taken our imaginary cut, and we've called that X. Now for this part of the beam to be in equilibrium, uh, which it is, we'll need to have uh, an internal vertical force for some of the, the vertical forces to be equal to zero. Uh, so that, of course, will be the internal shear force, and we'll also need to have uh, an in, uh, a bending moment to keep the sum of the moments uh, equal to zero. Now before I draw on here my internal actions, I'm going to refer to um, the positive uh, sign convention for the internal actions. Now if you're uh, watching this video, um, you'll need to check with your particular textbook um, uh, and your, uh, what your lecturer has told you with regards to what is the positive sign convention for internal actions. But for this video, I'm going to use the sign convention as described by the engineering mechanics textbook by Hibbler. Okay, so here's the diagram from um, the Hibbler textbook. So if we look over here, we see our shear force, internal shear action, uh, shown as positive acting downwards on this face. If we we're looking at this face over here, positive would be uh, upwards. And for our moments, uh, on this face we have anti-clockwise as positive, and on this face we have clockwise as positive. Okay, so in our uh, example problem, we're looking at this face. So positive shear will be acting downwards, and a positive moment will be anti-clockwise. Okay, so let's draw those in on our diagram. Uh, over here, so we'll have our shear force, internal shear force acting downwards in the positive direction according to our sign convention, and our internal moment acting anti-clockwise. Right, so now we can uh, write our equations of equilibrium for this free body diagram. So we have, uh, start with some of the forces in the vertical, vertical direction to calculate our internal shear force. So we have RAY acting positively upwards, and we have um, our distributor load acting over this section of the beam and its equivalent single point load um, here will be just W times X. So we can put that in. So that's acting in the negative direction, minus W times X. Now, uh, just pause at this um, point here. Uh, a common mistake that I see a lot of students make is when they draw this free body diagram here, rather than including the distributor load over this por portion of the beam, uh, they'll draw the beam uh, just with this equivalent force here for the entire distributor load, and so they won't have any loading um, shown on here. So when you draw your free body diagram, you must, for uh, when you're taking the cut to work out your internal actions, you must have that Uniform, uniformly distributed load 
shown on that section that you're looking at and then work out its equivalent single point load um, on that section. So returning to our equation of equilibrium, uh, the only thing we need to include further is our internal shear force acting in the negative direction, all equal to zero. So we can rearrange that to get our equation for the internal shear force as a function of x, which is the position within that section of the beam. Okay, so the next thing to do is to use the moment equation. Uh, so what we do is to take moments about the cut end. Okay, so here is the point about which we're taking moments, all equal to zero. So we have Ray times x, and then we'll have our distributor load, W times x, as the equivalent single point load, and it acts halfway along. So that will be just Wx squared on two, so Wx times x over two. Uh, acting in the anti-clockwise direction about um, the cut end and note that we had a negative moment here for the moment effect of RAY because it was going clockwise around the cut end plus our moment which is anti-clockwise all equal to zero and then we can rearrange that to get our equation for the internal bending moment between points A and B. Okay, so note that this equation that we've calculated here is only valid for the section between the points A and B. So where we've got um, a change in the loading, okay, that's where uh, this equation is valid until. When we go to draw our um, shear and bending moment diagrams, um, we'll want to know the values at important points. So uh, at the start of the beam at point A, so x equals zero, we can substitute that into our equation here, and of course that will be equal to 12. And our moment equation, substitute x equal to zero in here, and the moment is zero, and we should know that just from um, the fact that we've got a pin connection here, and no moment applied. All right, so at x equals four, so at point B, do the same thing again, substitute into our uh, shear force equation, x equals four gives us a shear force of minus 20 kilonewtons. Do the same thing for our moment, substitute for four into here, and that gives us a moment of, min of minus 16 kilonewton meters.